Adieu, Toupissant. Madame de Polignac. It's dreadful ages. All is lost. How were you able to leave Saint Clou? Earlier, after you ventured out into the palace grounds, all of the machines that were guarding us set out after you. I seized the opportunity to go to the stables and jump into a horseless carriage. What are you doing here, madame? The children, Aegis. Charlotte and the Dauphin. The Queen and the Marquis de Lafayette did everything they could do to save them from the King's madness. They spent days working out every detail of this operation with the greatest secrecy. The preparations for departure with our accomplices in the Queen's house. The children's escape hidden inside this wagon. Our meeting here, in this very place, then our departure with the riders who were to ensure our safe passage all the way to Austria. They would have been safe there with their uncle, the Emperor. But you can see for yourself. The children are nowhere to be seen. Poor Monsieur Cléry. He... he was the Dauphin's valet. The poor soul gave his life to protect the little ones. Four horses for three men. Someone is missing. A red cap with a rooster embroidered on it. A list of staging posts between Paris and Liège. Perhaps Madame de Polignac will know what this means. The attackers all bear the same red cap with an embroidered rooster. It's the symbol worn by those who support the Duc d'Orléans. One of them had a map indicating all the staging posts from here to the Principality of Liège. Liège? That rabble-ridden city is where the Duke and his miscreants have established their base. Over here, there are four dead horses and the body of a third man wearing a red cap. Four horses for three men. That means one assailant managed to get away. It's beyond doubt. The Duke's men have taken the children. They're the ones behind this ambush, and they knew every detail of our plans. We were betrayed. But surely the ambush did not go exactly as planned. Three of them lost their lives. That's true. If only we could catch the one who was able to escape. But now that I think about it, the riders that the Marquis de Lafayette promised us, if they made it here, they may have been able to surprise the kidnappers and stop them from carrying out their misdeed. By the grace of God, they may already be on their way to Vienna with the children. I shall get to the bottom of this. Which garrison is this squad from? They are stationed at the Hotel des Invalides. The riders must have left from there. Very well. I will try to retrace their steps. As for you, please return to the Queen at once. You have taken enough risks as it is. Find the children, Aegis. Je vous en supplie. of gunpowder. It would appear that Monsieur Lavoisier's gunpowder was taken to the Bastille. place in the Luxembourg Gardens. I should keep looking. A 
Fire and ice. Full amour de Dieu. Run and hide. What do you mean, Papa? Hurry, I beg you. The Count is at our door. He shall take us away. Good heavens. Don't worry about me. Run, I say. Run! Where could she have escaped to? That hiding place in the Luxembourg Gardens. If I could find out where it was, I could track Atanias. ravaged the church and slaughtered the faithful. Is no longer sustainable, Your Majesty. Your mechanical revolution has changed the face of the kingdom, but the coffers are woefully empty. The debt, Monsieur Necker. This debt that you and your banking friends helped to create for your own benefit, and which is now forcing us to levy new taxes. Will my subjects be able to bear another tax? Yes, Your Majesty. As long as it is distributed fairly, the representatives of the nobility, the clergy, and the Third Estate must come to an agreement. That is why we have convened the Estates General. Tomorrow you are to preside over the opening ceremonies. Oh, your Estates General. Nothing good can come of it. You have roused the spirit of rebellion. All I hear about are their damned Cahiers de Doléance. My rightful enjoyment is being challenged. The streets of Versailles are teeming with loudmouth fanatics with sacrilegious thoughts. Tell me, Monsieur le Ministre, have you purposely set this army of the unwashed against me? Your Majesty, I have always been your most faithful servant. Beware, Necker. Beware.
I have a surprise in store for anyone who dares attack my throne. My dear Suzanne, take my hand, please. Don't let them take me away. No. Oh, no, this, this has to stop. I don't want to be tormented anymore. That is not my intention. I have come to rescue you. Rescue me? But what on earth are you? It is of no importance. What did you see and hear before you regained consciousness? I had frightful visions, rageful wraiths filled with pain and sorrow. And it was cold enough to curdle the blood. It's impossible to describe. All the rage and anger. I was in another body, I think. So big, so powerful. And there was this commanding voice, ordering me to spread terror and death. Did I really hear it? Or did I momentarily lose my mind? Who are you, monsieur? Don't you know? I'm Jacques Necker, Ministre des Finances. Well, I was before I was captured. But this situation suggests that the king has decided to dismiss me from his service. What does he accuse you of? My alleged connivance with the Third Estate, no doubt. And most of all, for having been the first to ask to convene the Estates General. How and when were you captured? When the machines attacked, my wife and I fled our home to hide not far from there, in the Église Sainte Marie. But we didn't stand a chance against the machines. They overran the nave, wantonly mowing down the faithful. My wife. My poor wife. She wasn't able to escape. 
I'm sadly convinced of this. As for me, my life was spared only so I could be tormented. What is the meaning of all this? What will you do now? There is no future for me in this kingdom. I need to find a safe place where I can prepare for my departure as soon as possible. I will take you to the Cordelier convent. You will be safe there. A la bonne heure, she's back. Aegis, what a joy and relief to see you again. Monsieur. Welcome to our stronghold. I'm sure that everyone here is aware of the great debt we all owe you. As you can see, the most exhausted among us are growing stronger. While the most determined are already planning our counterattack. I did not expect to see you all together. Four days ago. The representatives of the Third Estate gathered in a tennis court. They swore not to separate until they had established a constitution for the nation. But that was not the only oath we swore. All the honorable men who were at Versailles, representatives and patriots, members of the Club Breton, secretly swore to meet here if they were dispersed. You, Aegis, have allowed them to gather once again. Though unfortunately many are missing, we still have hope. Why did you choose to meet in this convent? It was my idea. Voyez-vous, I stay here whenever my obligations bring me to Paris. No other retreat inspires such peace and contemplation. Et puis, truth be told, this building has always felt like a fortress to me. Just look at how thick these walls are. For two whole days, the Patriots in the Quarter consolidated the outer walls to make it an impenetrable citadel. No automat has broken through our defenses yet. Where are the monks, mon père? They are secluded in their quarters, praying for the salvation of the people of Paris. However, we bear no illusions. We are weak, we are divided, and we are unarmed. Without you, without your warrior strength, we have no chance of turning things around. You are sent by heaven above, Aegis. From now on, you may consider the Cordelia convent your headquarters and a welcome refuge. We must speak, you and I, in private, if you please. Monsieur de Lafayette must not hear a word of what I'm about to tell you. What do you mean? You all seem to be certain that I will use my strengths to serve your cause. Are you forgetting that I have a task to accomplish? Not at all, madame. We all know and support your plan to free Monsieur de Vaucanson. That is why I've taken the time to think of a way for you to get to the Bastille. I am listening. There is a patriot in Paris whose pamphlets have aroused Monsieur de Lafayette's ire. His anger is so strong that the poor man had to disappear to escape arrest. I know that he is secretly hiding in the quarries in Montmartre. A labyrinth he is said to know like the back of his hand. If anyone can help you navigate the obstacles that keep you from the Bastille, it is the elusive Monsieur Marat. Very well. I will go and find him. Monsieur Necker. I owe you my life, madame. So I am embarrassed to ask you for anything more. Do not fear. You have my full attention. Suzanne, my beloved wife. I cannot bring myself to accept her death. Despite all the evidence, I still hope to see her alive again. I need to be sure. Mon Dieu. What have I done to deserve such a fate? Why is the king sworn to destroy me and all that I hold dear? After everything I've done for him, my abnegation. Why would the king owe you anything? I dedicated my life to the kingdom as his minister. On my life and my fortune as well. I refuse to accept any remuneration for my services in order to keep the accounts balanced. And I personally filled the king's coffers with two and a half million livres.
from my own private accounts. Bonds in the Caisse des Comptes, which the king keeps in a tailor-made armoire de fer in the Palais des Tuileries. He stores all his secrets there. I'd wager there's enough in there to sully his reputation a hundred times over. You must retrieve these bonds post-haste, madame. They must not be used to allow this madman to build more murderous automats. Do I have any chance of opening it? Don't even think about it, madame. Despite your incredible strength, that safe is said to be impenetrable. It was designed precisely to that effect. I personally never had access to it. I suppose that its contents were too unofficial for the honest minister that I always was. Who has the key? The king does, that's for sure. Anyone else? How could I know? His shadow advisors, most likely. Now that I think about it, there's a rumor that has been going round Versailles for a while now. It's said that Monsieur de Mirabeau used to come and go as he pleased at the Tuileries. That he oversaw diplomatic missions for the Crown. Not in any official capacity, of course. Who knows? He might know more about this matter than I do. I will ask him. I will look into what happened to your wife. Bless you, madame. Where should I start my investigation? In the Faubourg Saint-Germain, east of Les Invalides. We were separated in the Église Sainte-Marie, on Rue de Bourgogne. I shall be off. You are the only hope of seeing my beloved wife again, and of foiling the plans of the clockwork tyrant. Aegis, I'd like to talk to you about my research. Do you have a few moments to spare for me? Certainly, mon père. I am listening. I've carefully collected the testimony of our companions here. Then I compared them with the observations made during my investigation of the man who calls himself Cagliostro. I came to quite the shocking conclusion. I think... I believe... I have discovered how the royal automats remain constantly in motion. Like clocks that never need winding. They get their energy from the souls of the dead, Aegis. They drink from the anima essence that permeates the purgatory described by Monseigneur de la Far. These machines feed on the dead. The greater the massacre, the deeper the river where they slake their thirst. Is there any way to stop the bloodshed, mon père? I believe there is always hope, Aegis. As long as I remain free to pursue my research, I will never lose faith. I keep thinking about the three Nemes, these echoes. All of this is clearly related to Nicholas Flamel's work. The Alchemist? Precisely, mon ami. And this leads me to fear the worst. What have we to fear from an Alchemist who died nearly four centuries ago? Not him, per se. Rather, the heretic who is exploiting his discoveries. This poses a grave danger to us all. What do you fear, mon père? What do I fear? Nearly two months ago, the king forbade anyone from setting foot inside the Église Saint-Jacques de la Boucherie, near the Hôtel de Ville. He had the priests forcibly removed. They hardly even had time to save the church's sacred relics. Since then, only our Father in Heaven knows what they've been doing there, hidden away from the people of Paris. Oh dear. Flamel's tomb. My thoughts exactly, Monseigneur. Legend has it that Flamel was buried with his Lapis Philosophorum. What is the Lapis Philosophorum, mon père? The Philosopher's Stone. Where do I begin? No one knows its true nature, or even what it might look like. All that is known is that it is said to grant untold riches and eternal life to whoever possesses it. Its very existence is questioned, of course. But if it's true, just imagine what sinister purpose the king and his accomplices might find for it. We must elucidate this matter at any cost. Where is this tomb? In the church's crypt. The priests always ensured that it remained undisturbed, despite the mystery surrounding it. But now they're no longer there to protect it. We need to know for certain. But how? There are automats everywhere. Aegis. Oui, mon père. Will you help us get to the bottom of this? 
Did you not say that it was impossible to enter the church? There is perhaps a solution. The penitence door behind the Châtelet leads to the Quartier de l'Hôtel de Ville. It's only opened on Good Friday, but this year, I had the honor and good fortune to lead the procession. Here is the key. Goodbye, mon père. Aegis, a word, s'il vous plaît. How is your research on Nicola? I have... Don't take too long. Don't forget that the tomb is in the church isn't... Goodbye, mon père. My respects, Monseigneur. I didn't expect to see you again so soon, Aegis. We missed you when we had to leave our shelter at Place Saint-Méry. The path that led us to this convent was not an easy one, believe me. Goodbye, Monseigneur. Allez en paix, Aegis. Monsieur Raymond. Aegis, we are very pleased to see you again. It was very unwise of us to leave the Société without such a capable bodyguard as yourself. It is a miracle that we got here safely. What is the aim of this organization? We publish articles and exert our influence on those who are in a position. Our numbers grow by and we have but it yeah. Alas, there has been I hope to come. What fate does the kingdom reserve? Oh, this this has I, I am What do you want to talk to me about? Have you ever heard of the Club de Massiac, Aegis? No, monsieur. It's an association that meets at the Hotel de Massiac. Just west of Le Al. It counts some of the wealthiest plantation owners in the Empire. Those from Saint Domingue and the Petite Santé are most formidable adversaries. They are waging a war of influence to keep the slave trade going and resort to the vilest methods to achieve their ends. They worship nothing but money. And their greed is matched only by their cruelty. Regrettably, my interests occasionally require me to suffer their company. Two months ago, I was in La Havre to settle some business with the Admiralty. When I overheard a conversation between two planters from Bastère, if they are to be believed, the Club de Massiac is plotting to create sleepless slaves, des esclaves sans sommeil. Those were their exact words. It's hard to say what this could possibly mean, but I fear they plan to administer some foul drug to their slaves to force them to toil day and night without rest. Our organization will not let these poor souls endure such a hell. Aegis, we must look into this. It is a matter of great urgency. You speak of greed, Monsieur Raymond. But could you enlighten us as to what makes you any different from the planters you condemn? What exactly do you accuse me of, Monsieur de Robespierre? S'il vous plaît, do tell. Do you not also exploit the labor of these poor souls yourself on your indigo plantation? I fight every minute of every day to improve their condition. No one would have the audacity to deny this. If that's the case, then why wait? Free them. You preach abolition, yet you continue to line your pockets at their expense. The truth is, you refuse to upend the established colonial order because your entire fortune depends on it. It's easy to criticize from atop Mount Olympus, Maximilian. You know nothing of the realities of saint domingue What would happen to all these people if I freed them tomorrow? Without an education, without a livelihood, I would be condemning them to the most abject misery. No. I must act with both compassion and realism. Any reform, revolutionary or not, must be taken step by step, with moderation and prudence. This reform is not so difficult. I've begun it myself, at La Belle Gabrielle, my plantation in Guyane. There you will not find slaves, but workers who earn a weekly wage. And my plantation is no less profitable. Ah, yes, profit. Because that's the most important thing. Don't you see, the law of nature gives every man the right to cultivate his own land. Monsieur, calm yourselves. I implore you. Now is no time to quarrel. What Monsieur Raymond has related to us is extremely worrying. We must find out more about this plot to create sleepless slaves as quickly as possible. Aegis. You are the only one who stands a chance of making it to the Hotel de Massiac alive. Monsieur Bailly. Ah, mademoiselle. 
I am very pleased to find you here with us within the shelter of these walls. I found a document written in a script that I was unable to read. Let me see. Ah, je vois. These pages were written using some sort of shorthand. A variation on Taylor's system, no doubt. I want to use it myself from time to time while jotting down my ideas as they come. What does it say? Hmm. It's a bit difficult to decipher. Je crois. I believe it's an autopsy report. The author writes that the subject died from a large dose of prussic acid. What is prussic acid? My apologies, Aegis, but I'm no chemist. You should ask Monsieur Lavoisier. Goodbye, Monsieur B. Monsieur Lavoisier. What can I do for you, Aegis? What is prussic acid? It's a volatile compound extracted from Prussian blue, which is a pigment derived from the cochineal, an insect. What does it do? Oh, it's a lethal poison of the most dangerous sort. Though at weaker doses, it merely induces a deep soporific state, or a coma, if you will. A deadly poison. Aegis? Is everything all right? The clues I found at the warehouse suggest that the gunpowder was moved to the Bastille. Diable! You must find a way to get there and put an end to this threat. Goodbye, Monsieur Levoisier. Eh bien. Do you come bearing news from Monsieur Marat? No. Not I have it on good He's the only... Is your plan to arm the populace going as planned? Oh, far from it, madame. The situation is hopeless. Even if they were armed and formed into battalions, the Patriots would not be able to fight. Why is that? Most of the strategic points in the city are inaccessible. A strange illness strikes all who try. They are seized by an irrational fear, one so great that those who do not lose consciousness go mad or perish on the spot. This makes it impossible to do anything. Any attempt at an uprising is a fool's errand. The locations you mention share a common feature. A statue holding a lantern. That's right. From what little I could make out, they appear to be depictions of a Vestal Virgin watching over the sacred fire. Une lanterne des morts! What do you mean, monsieur? Lanterns of the dead. Ancient stone pillars that are found near some cemeteries. Our ancestors kept a fire going on top of them. Today, no one knows what they were used for. A symbol of light triumphing over darkness, perhaps? Others claim that human bones, mercury and lime, were burnt there. Some odious sorcery that was meant to entrap the tormented souls that wandered around the burial grounds. That makes sense and confirms my observations. I'm now certain that the King's Lanterns capture the anima essence of the dead who have been cast into purgatory. And that this essence is what allows the automats to stay in motion without needing a key to wind them. Now that I think about it, madame, you obviously are not subject to the harmful effects of these lanterns. No, au contraire. When activated, these statues reveal an apparatus that allows me to repair myself. It follows that if you destroy these lanterns, the people will be free to fight again. Unfortunately, they are preternaturally strong. Nothing can so much as damage them. Come now, no metal is indestructible. If we knew what these lanterns were made of, perhaps I could find a way to destroy them. Take a look at this ledger, Monsieur Lavoisier. It contains a list of metals. I found it by the factories, near Vaucanson's workshop. Let's see. Steel, molybdenum, very good. Tian, donc, tungsten, and zirconium. This master blacksmith knows his trade. These metals can be used to make the strongest alloy imaginable, as long as you have a fortune to invest. For that, our clockwork tyrant knows no bounds. Well, Monsieur Lavoisier, is there any way to break this alloy? Break it? Certainly not. But a mineral acid could change its structure. Melt it, perhaps. I would recommend... Uh, mm, sulfuric acid, or vitriol, if you prefer to use its common name. Where can I obtain some vitriol? I had some, but my laboratory at L'Arsenal was ransacked. I can't tell you any more than that. 
You should ask my colleague, Monsieur Bailly. He uses similar substances in his research. Monsieur de Mirabeau. Minister Necker claims that you are a familiar face at the Twillery Palace. Well, that old story. Will it hound me until I have drawn my last breath? This, madame, is nothing but an unfounded rumor that I am trying in vain to dispel. To what do I owe the displeasure of having to defend myself once again? I must get hold of some documents that are kept in an armored safe in the King's chambers. What luck could resist your talents? Minister Necker said it was indestructible. Hmm. Oh, I see. Well, let me think. Who could help you? After all, a lock is nothing more than a simple mechanism. Nothing that can resist the expertise of our dear Monsieur Bailly. Why don't you ask him for help? I'll be sure to do so. Now, who else might be of use? Oh, there's Monsieur Lavoisier as well, our gunpowder commissioner. I'm sure he'll have no trouble finding you something you can use to blow the door off that stubborn safe. Good. I will go and find him. Now, if you'll forgive me, I have an urgent matter to attend to. You are forgiven for everything. In that case, it has been a pleasure, madam. Monsieur Necker. Madame? Eh bien, do you come bearing good news? I'm not... Don't remember that has... Monsieur Le Marquis. I'm listening. I went to the meeting point you indicated. I had an unexpected encounter there. Get to the facts. Who did you meet there? Madame de Polignac. The Queen's favorite. She made no secret of her reason for being in that desolate place. So now I know all about the precious cargo that is the cause of your great concern. Seigneur, the children, what happened? Tell me that nothing bad has happened to them. That remains to be determined. One thing is certain. Charlotte and the young Dauphin are missing. The evidence points to an ambush by the Duc d'Orléans' men. They apparently attacked the wagon the children were hiding in. How... how the hell did they know? This ambush could not have taken place without an accomplice. You were betrayed. A plague on Orléans and his damned informants. They have taken the children. That still remains to be seen. It seems that the Duke's men were interrupted while carrying out their task. Three of them lost their lives. A fourth was able to escape. Excellent. I bet it was my hussars who sent the vermin running. But why the hell haven't they reported to me yet? Only they could tell you that. Would you be so kind as to go and find them? The lives of these poor children hang in the balance. My hussars are stationed at Les Invalides. That's from where they were to set off for Gros Caillou. Goodbye, Monsieur le Marquis. Anyone seen Monsieur de Mirabeau? How is your research on... I have done... Don't, don't forget that the church is... Goodbye, Mom. How was your search at the vocal? I found... This letter refers to a hiding place where she often sought refuge. It's in the Jardin du Luxembourg. I know the place. Oh, one day... Eugène and I were walking in the Luxembourg Gardens when suddenly Athenais jumped out from our hiding place like a wild animal. It was a startling, almost frightening sight. The spot is on the edge of the garden, hidden by vegetation between two statues. Would you happen to know where I could find some vitriol? Sulfuric acid? Of course. Combined with sea salt and green copperas, we use it to polish the lenses of our telescopes. But I don't know how much we have. You would need to go to the Louvre and take a look at the observatory storeroom to find out. If you will allow me to. Of course, madame. 
Here is the key. I'm looking for a way to force a lock that is supposed to be unbreakable. Monsieur de Mirabeau advised me to ask you for help. But I'm an astronomer, mon enfant, not a locksmith. I know my way around lenses, filters, racks and tripods. But I've never given a moment's thought to how a lock works. Monsieur de Mirabeau was joking with you, that's all. Où est-il, ce brave homme? So that we might ask him. He has left. A matter that could not wait. Excuse me? Do you mean he left the convent? That's madness. What was so important that he would put himself in such danger? Intriguing indeed. Monsieur Lavoisier. What can I do for you, Aegis? I would like to access the contents of a safe that is supposedly unbreakable. Dare I ask for your help, Monsieur Lavoisier? And how can I be of assistance to you, Madame? I need gunpowder to break through the door. Gunpowder? But I don't have a speck of it, mon ami. <laughs> do you think I just walk around with explosives in my pockets? Oh. I apologize. It was Monsieur de Mirabeau's idea. Mirabeau? What is this ridiculousness? I suspect he knows full well whatever he's playing at. Where is the animal? So we can ask him what's truly going on. He has left. He had an urgent matter to attend to. Eh bien. I'm sorry, madame. If I could inspect the safe and determine what metal was used in its fabrication, I might be able to find a solution. But given the circumstances, I'm sadly not in a position to help you. I understand. The clues I found at the warehouse suggest that the gunpowder was moved to the Bastille. Diable! You must find a way to get... Where can I obtain some vitriol? I had some, but my laboratory at last... I can't tell you any... You should ask my colleague. He uses... Goodbye, They fled in that direction. I should be able to find a way in. I have already passed by the Église Sainte-Marie. I can get back there quickly from here. immediately.
Not a single one escaped. Here I am, at an impasse. Should I go to the Tuileries to examine the safe? There may be a way to force it open. I can get to the Tuileries Palace via the Louvre. Then I should be able to enter it through the courtyard. The lock wasn't forced. Whoever opened it had the key. Monsieur Necker's bonds are still there. There's something engraved on it. H.G. Ricchetti. Comte de Mirabeau. Whoever broke into this safe left behind the most valuable thing in it. This doesn't make sense.
I have just come from the Tuileries. The Armoire de Fer has been ransacked. Diable. Someone beat us to it. This is very unfortunate. God only knows what we would have found there. Whoever it was had to fight for it. I found a body there, killed by automats. Mon Dieu. How dreadful. Dreadful indeed. Especially since I discovered this in the victim's hand. And what is that, pray tell? A dueling pistol. With your name engraved on its plate. Oh, I... May we? You're right. It is my pistol. It was stolen along with a number of other things. It happened just before the Estates General at my lodgings in Versailles. But how on earth did my weapon end up in the hands of this poor soul? I am certain we will find an explanation. I'm going to have a look around. With your permission, of course. Well, since I'm in no position to dissuade you... You appear to have burnt these papers in a hurry. I'm eager to hear your explanation. It's nothing at all, I assure you. Frivolous letters that were cluttering my desk. I find your defense unconvincing. Why won't you tell me the truth? You don't understand. This is a matter of the utmost importance that I cannot discuss with a creature such as yourself. I am an automat, monsieur. This is true. But I serve the Queen. And my only aim is to put a stop to the crimes that have befallen the Kingdom. Well... Know that you're not alone in serving the Queen. What was in those letters you threw into the fire? My private correspondence with the King. I had a key to the armoire, which served as a mailbox. Are you conspiring with the King? No, you don't understand. I was something of a shadow advisor, a, a diplomat, working in complete discretion. I feared his stubbornness would lead the kingdom to ruin, so I tried to reassure him regarding the aims of the Third Estate. But when Vaucanson told me what happened at Meudon, I realized it was a lost cause. You claim to be a friend of the Queen. The king has gone insane. After what happened at Meudon, that much is clear. We can no longer expect any leniency from him. Hence, my support for his wife. She's a headstrong woman, and much wiser than she lets on. You must know that she means to put her youngest on the throne. The young prince, Louis Charles. A regency would restore peace and unity to the kingdom then all that would remain would be to establish a constitution. I have the support of the people. They trust me. I'm the only one that can bring about these reforms. I found your pistol in the hands of a dead man. Who was this unfortunate soul? Mathieu, one of the servants I had sent to retrieve the letters. I gave him the pistol for self-defense. Alas, it seems it was of little use to him against the King's Automats. Tell me, what happened at Madame? It's all here in this letter, written in the King's own hand. Please, give it to the Queen. She must learn the truth. Why were you in such a hurry to destroy your correspondence? The letters contained sensitive information about my Third Estate colleagues. If it had gotten out, I would have surely lost my allies' trust as well as any hope of establishing a regency along with it. 